Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at um, how to start off making a text-based adventure game. So uh, one of the things which is a really good way to practice all of your coding techniques is to start off by um, making like a little text-based adventure game and starting to bring in all of the different elements of um, the coding that we've looked at. So you can start basic, you can go as, you know, as in-depth into this as you like, but um, it's a good way of really demonstrating what you've learned. So what we we're going to look at for this text adventure is we are going to be looking at um, uh, classes, we're going to be looking at opening a file, writing to a file, reading a file and we're going to be looking at how you would go about randomly generating enemies from classes and things like that as well. So the this um, set of tutorials is going to be broken down into sort of little chunks and the first chunk we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the classes so these are going to be your enemy classes and your character classes so just like beforehand um, in order to um, create a class you need to type class and then you give it a name so I'm going to do the first three classes here as um, kind of like three different um, options for my user to choose from at the beginning so maybe I have a warrior and then in brackets, I just write uh, object. I'll come back down in a second. Oh, wait, stop arguing. Stop it. So I'll give that warrior some um, specifics in just a minute, but I'll just do another class then. I don't know why I called it warrior as well. So I'll give that warrior its specifics in just a minute, but what I'm going to do is we're going to define uh, my second class. And uh, I'll do the same again. So these are my free um, uh, classes, just to get me going. So my user will be able to select any one of these characters to play uh, in the actual game. So now that I actually have um, my class names, I need to put some stuff inside them. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm indented here. So each one of the classes will have a health, and I'll set my warrior to 150. I'll set my archer to 125. And I'll set my wizard to 100. Each of them is going to have a defense. And I'll set that to um, quite high for my warrior. It's equal a bit lower for my archer. And a little bit lower still for my wizard. And finally, um, well, I'll do a couple more. Um, basically, firstly, make sure that when you're writing these out, that these are all spelt exactly the same. Because when we actually go to start calling these actions, we're not going to call um, the archer and then the specific action. This bit here will be determined by what the user has already put in. Um, that will come into it a little bit more, uh, a little bit later. But what I just want to make sure you do is make sure that everything is spelt correctly underneath the actual class object that you're defining. Um, let's go for magic. Um, oh, pretty give him some magic and then finally I will just do let's just do gold so everybody starts with zero gold so these are my um, three classes to start off with now I might later on come back up to the top here and add some more elements to these classes but also what I'm just going to do because this program's going to get quite big I use comment tags on it just to make sure 
that um, I know exactly where I am. So I'll just type in uh, hero classes and then here enemy classes. So my enemy classes here, I'm going to um, sort of uh, uh, define those exactly as before. Class. Um, And uh, I'll just give them and then a, an attack stat as well. It's important for these these characters to have an attack stat. Um, uh, we actually, uh, oh, that the our characters haven't got an attack stat either, so they'll need one of those as well. Um, let's just say attack is five there. Um, so let's do attack for my warrior being. Um, 50, attack for the archer also uh, being uh, a little bit less, attack for the wizard being 30 there. So what we're doing, what we will be doing is we'll be basically putting these stats up against each other to see how that affects the health and then how that affects uh, the rest of the game. But what we'll do later on is we will start using things like um, health potions and different swords and equipping those to the characters so that they can actually ha get stat boosts to allow them to carry on through the game and find the game easier. <clears throat> um, is there something else I want to do here? Yes. Last thing I want to do, because we have an archer, we might as well have some sort of ranged stat as well. So warriors, not very ranged. The archer is. <clears throat> and the wizard is a little bit ranged. So, there's my goblin class set out. And I just do the same for... Some of these other classes as well. Health equals 60, defense equals uh, 12, attack equals 6. Now, I'm actually going to add another, uh, another item. I'm actually going to add another item to um, these uh, enemy classes, and that is rarity. So what I'm going to be saying is basically these characters will drop loot and based on their rarity value um, that will be specifically what type of loot they drop. So when we uh, go on to making the loot table later on we'll have a text document which looks at the loot which is available then based on uh, whether they are zero rarity or one rarity it will pick from the loot table on that specific line so um, rarity one let's just go keep going here so class you obviously do whatever um, classes you want and name them whatever enemies you want I'm going for a sort of a medieval fantasy type feel here with the, the witcher type thing um, <laughs> and it will look exactly like the Witcher. A bit of a joke there for you. Um, the defense here, 15. Attack equals 10. Rarity equals 2. Um, do one more. One more for the time being. Um, plus equals... Um, Demon dog at the end there, I thought we were bad just being a dog. Okay, so I've got my um, hero classes at the top here all laid out, and I have my enemy classes underneath. So what I will now, do, what I'm going to do in the next 
um, sort of block for this tutorial is I'm going to actually look at creating the loot table. Um, the actual mechanics for bringing the loot table into the program, we're not going to actually do those, um, uh, but we will define the functions for looking through them. Um, but we can't actually use the loot table, so we define its functions and all the rest of it. So we'll be looking at the loot table next time. So I hope you've got something out of this, and I hope you can find, uh, follow along with this as well. Um, we will be doing, I'll be doing at least one of these a week. So keep an eye out for the uploads coming up. And uh, if you've got any questions, or you want to know anything else about anything that we've gone through, just leave a comment or a message or something, and then um, I can add some uh, extra bits in next time. Um, one thing I would just say with adding in these items here is that you can have anything in your item. You can have anything in the um, in the specifics of each class. So if I wanted, for example, my goblin to say say like my goblin had a specific introduction that they were going to say so every time my character comes across this goblin it says like something like this i could do i could do that but obviously i just need to make sure that all of my um all of my classes have an intro and they'll have something consistent uh, consistent so i can call all of the intros and it uh, depends on uh, what class it is, but they all just need exactly the same, um, you know, stats within there. Okay, so I'm going to add the other two in here. Intro. And I'll think of something interesting to put into these um, for next time. So, like I say, I hope you found that interesting, and uh, we will be going through the loot table and how the loot table system works next time. All right, well, thanks a lot for listening.